The question everyone kept asking was, why? Why does healthcare vary so much? Wenberg focused on the demand side. He argued that the prevailing ethos was that more is always better, and the best way to deal with supplier-induced demand was to educate consumers to make better decisions. Others argued that we didn't actually know that. We didn't know which rate was right. Was there under-servicing? Was there over-servicing? Some combination thereof? Were the right decisions being made on the basis of evidence? Robert Brook from the Rand Corporation in UCL, he accordingly took a very different tack from Wenberg. Brook used psychometric methods and case audits. He asked expert, expert panels of doctors to digest the available evidence and rate the appropriateness of specific interventions for large numbers of case scenarios with different permutations and combinations of clinical features that one might see in practice a way of getting beyond the constrained inclusion criteria of many clinical trials. Those scenarios could then be mapped onto the relevant medical records, matching the permutations and combinations. This and other work by Brooke and his team, stretching over some four decades, has made a huge difference to the way we think about quality of care and manage it within healthcare systems. Those findings, however, didn't solve the puzzle of variations in care. Higher or lower utilization rates simply weren't well correlated in either direction with better or worse decision making as judged by these expert panels. And there were two other findings that emerged from Brooks' team and its uh, line of research. The first, intriguingly, was that clinical culture varies a lot. Interventional cardiologists believe in intervention more than family doctors or non-invasive cardiologists. Surgeons believe in surgery more than non-surgeons. British doctors were more conservative than US doctors. And when our group got involved in some of these study studies, we found predictably that Canadians came right up the middle very consistently. <laughs> the second finding was that the panels either didn't know how to rate a given scenario or they disagreed vehemently on how to interpret the evidence and what ratings should be made. That type of patient ended up in something of a gray zone. The evidence simply wasn't definitive enough in either direction. And as the slide shows, these weren't just theoretical issues. Actual audits of practice show that a su substantial amount of intervention was taking place in these gray zones of uncertainty as shown on the far right column. So asked in 1999 by the New England Journal of Medicine to opine on a definition of appropriate care, I had to admit that this was a very elastic concept. 